Hey, what's up guys? It is I, Mark Yoon, and today I another hopefully exciting video. So what I'm bringing you today is kind of a little bit of a bummer, but hopefully we can bring some hope at the end of this with some possibilities and bring up topics from recent games. And what I'm talking about is uh, Hidokai Morita and his uh, affiliation with Team Ninja. And he actually tweeted this out um, that raised a few eyebrows, if you don't mind like saying that. And uh, after doing so, caused a little bit of a stir on Twitter and has since uh, protected their tweets by putting their account on private. And uh, this being the case, probably because they didn't respect, expect this reaction to blow up and take off as much as it has. But the tweet is in Japanese, which I will uh, show you right here. And we will translate it. So the direct translation using Google Translate, obviously, is after the, re the release of Dead or Alive 6, a smaller team was developing Dead or Alive 7 and Dead or Alive 6 minor changes. But it was decided to disband the team and cancel the project just before producer slash developer um, director Shinobori retired. And you can see now that he has gone private after this kind of blew up and took off. There are a myriad of reasons why probably people hitting him up with like hate mail for, you know, you know, <laughs> leaking this or talking about that Dead or Alive 7, which is a beloved franchise, is not no longer going to happen or has been put on the back burner. And I want to talk about a little bit about that. So I'm an avid fan of the Dead or Alive series. I've played all of them since the first one. Uh, I own all of them. Um, these are the ones I have physically, obviously. I have a couple of them digitally, but it was always... I think one of the best fighting engines in my opinion because of the speed and uh, just like how you're allowed to use your terrain and just like the quickness and the move flows, like the combo flows, everything like that. I just love the series as a whole. Now, I have a little bit of a special invested interest in this because Dead or Alive 6 wasn't the game that a lot of us expected it to be. Ever since uh, Dead or Alive 5, there have been a lot of uh, weird things going on with microtransactions. And this is old news. So when Dead or Alive 5 first launched, not Dead or Alive last round as it's known now, Dead or Alive 5 was pretty bare bones in the beginning and it touted lofty microtransactions that were exceedingly expensive. We're talking about packs where you can't download like a character that was DLC without downloading the entire pack. Sometimes he's running you $89 or $99 even, sometimes even $110 depending on which pack it was and what it came with. And mostly these are just costumes. So a lot of these things were themed and there's tons of costumes. Uh, there's like over a thousand dollars worth of uh, costumes in the game easily with DLC characters. And uh, Dead or Alive 5 was specifically a little bit hyped because there was going to be Virtual Fighter characters. And at this point, Virtual Fighter hadn't returned in a true form except for like the Yakuza arcade games uh, for a while. So we wanted to kind of test this out, right? Because Dead or Alive has always been an interesting and weird series. Like the, it gets tossed around like a baton very often and quite often to different people. So we have like Dead or Alive 1, which was on like PlayStation 1, right? And now Dead or Alive 1 is on like the Xbox store, I believe, digitally. Then we have Dead or Alive 2 and Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore, which came out for um, Xbox and for PlayStation 2. But then we go to Dead or Alive 3, which is an Xbox exclusive. <laughs> so it's only on Xbox. It has only ever been on Xbox. We go to Dead or Alive 4. It is only on Xbox 360, exclusive. And then we go to Dead or Alive 5, which is on both. And we can see it here. It was on PlayStation 3. And the Dead or Alive last round is on PlayStation 4. And the Dead or Alive Extreme series, uh, for the first... Two, the first one was on Xbox, the second one was on Xbox 360, and then when we get to Dead or Alive 3, it was on PlayStation 4. So there's a lot of weird jumping around, and it's really hard for a fan of the Dead or Alive series to like stay keeping up with every game if you only own one of the consoles. Uh, you kind of have to be one of those people that owns all the consoles to be able to play all of it. Uh, that's not to mention Dead or Alive Dimensions, which is 3DS exclusive. But... <clears throat> My case is like I've always like given hope to the series because I've loved it and I love the gameplay in particular. But we can harken back to these microtransactions really hurting the series. For a while, it's been thrown around the fighting game community that they are just over the top with their microtransactions. And when Six came out, people were pretty hyped. There was a lot of excitement in the air because this is going to be the first 
truly next gen Dead or Alive because you know Dead or Alive 5 started on the PS3. So when we got it, what we got was a watered down story, um, the same old, same old. They added very few characters, content or features, and a lot of the transactions that we started noticing pop up were just complete retreads of the last game. We're talking about down to exact um, costumes that you can buy, you have to purchase again. Um, and not they were still as exorbitant as ever. They were super expensive and it was really hard to afford all this. And a lot of people, it left a bad taste in their mouths. Then they came out with the DLC. It was like, well, now you can change the character's hair color, but it costs 99 cents each time you do so. <laughs> you know, just ridiculous stuff like that. And I think people had really had enough. Uh, Dead or Alive 6 uh, didn't sell well as compared to the rest of the series. And a lot of people, including myself, whenever they get a hankering for playing Dead or Alive, still go back to Dead or Alive 5 last round, because at the end of the day, it became a, a pretty good game overall. Dead or Alive 6 never really left the uh, studio and never really left, got its foot off the ground. Uh, the way it was released, people just didn't accept the microtransactions and they didn't make anywhere near the money as they thought they did. Plus they have a cash cow on mobile, which is uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Venus Vacation, which is only available in Asia. Uh, even if you have something like Ku App and you're in the States or something, you can't download it, it's not available. It's completely region locked. Even the Steam versions are region locked, so you have to get around it with like a VPN and stuff like that. But uh, that's a gotcha game and it's their cash cow right now, so they didn't really have to worry about it. So the director leaving put a damper on projects that were already in place. Like They were already working on fixes and like more updates for Dead or Alive 6, and as well as working um, behind the scenes on Dead or Alive 7. And these were halted and stopped, and the team was disbanded. Now, how does this sound familiar? Well, if you're a Soul Calibur fan, you know this is what happened with Soul Calibur 5. Soul Calibur 5, because of reception and the game's direction, um, was completely not a fan favorite at all, and it had the series canceled. The director literally stopped, uh, quit before, they say quit, but I think he was fired. He was let go or left or whatever, of his own volition. Before, like, I think it was like a month after the first game sales came through. And then after which uh, they canceled all their planned DLC, which was a bummer, especially if you bought the season passes. And uh, yeah, they just quietly killed the game. They tried a free to play modal, uh, they tried a free to play game and then they went with a mobile game, um, similar to how Dare Alive tried. But after the, the director left, um, that was all she wrote. So the series was canceled. It wasn't until Motohiro Okubo started producing the game. Um, and really pushed for Bandai Namco to bring the series back with a new team that he handpicked and uh, they were given their ultimatums of the game needs to make at least a million copies or else the series is done. So um, that's their glimmer of hope that I have for here. Now since 6 is like far newer than 5 for Soul Calibur, we have some time to let this sink in and it is going to be put on the back burner. Now, what I think is those projects are actually going to be scrapped. I think Soul Calibur, I mean, Soul Calibur, I'm sorry, Dead or Alive 7 is going to be scrapped. But I think at some point in the next couple of years, we will see a resurgence with a reboot of the franchise and a whole new team at the helm and a new uh, Team Ninja. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this pans out. Hopefully Koi Tecmo can get some good talent on this and bring a revitalization of the franchise. And I hope they don't think it's dead or alive has lost its taste and they realize it's the microtransactions. But this is why the waters are so muddied when it comes to mobile. Because when you're directly comparing, they're not really comparing, oh, this is a mobile game and this is a console game. They're just directing game versus game. And when Venus Vacation is making so much money as compared to your flagship title, of course they're gonna think that it's the game and not like the monetization practices because people are spending way more money on the similar stuff, even less stuff in fact, on the mobile versions and the Steam version. So why would they, you know? Maybe they just think that it's losing. It's, uh, it's I mean, it's glitz and glamor and for a Japanese development team, it's really hard to gauge the West's response when it comes to their acceptance of certain practices and things because they're only hearing 
uh, sales numbers and sales figures and what their board members are saying. And there's a lot of things that are lost in translation. So hopefully they come back stronger than they ever before, but it does seem like we aren't going to be seeing another Dead or Alive for a while, unfortunately for all you Dead or Alive fans out there. But hopefully uh, they get their act together and we can see a revitalization of the series and the next Dead or Alive that comes out will blow us all out of the water. Um, I think a good way to reintroduce the franchise, which I'll probably go into another video, is to give it us another Ninja Gaiden game and have uh, the ladies return to draw up some hype or perhaps have them as guests in other games like they have in the past, like Warriors Orochi, uh, for example. Um, I don't know, let's just see what happens and cross our fingers and hope and hold hype for the future. Well, with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to a close. And as I always say, I love it. Thank you. And thank you.